Welcome to Lab 4 Podcast on um, Manila Fights. Joining me is Dr. Sinha. Hi, Dr. Sinha. Hi, Marlene. So we're going to start with the large picture and narrow it down. So can you tell us where Manila Fights fit in in the context of phylogeny? So if we start thinking about the plants, which, you know, we've looked at a lot of plants, but let's focus on the land plants. So within the land plants, we have the non-vascular plants and the vascular plants. The vascular plants include the lycophytes, which you've already heard about, and then they include this other group called the euphilophytes, which, unlike the lycophytes, have large leaves. So the euphilophytes consist of two clades. One is the monilophyte clade, and the other is the seed plant clade. That's what most of us know the most about. Monolophytes, you know, seems like a weird name, so we can think about what the most familiar things in this group would be, and the most familiar things in this group would be the ferns. But there are other groups that are included in the monolophytes, and we can talk about that. Okay, yeah, so um, you said the two ferns, mm -hmm. and then there's the aquacetum, correct? Yeah, yeah, the aquacetum relatives are known as the spinopsids, and there's really only one living genus remaining in this group. So this was a very large group in the history of land plants, you know, we're thinking fossil history, but now one genus. And then the relatives of Silotum, the Silophytes, and these have only two genera. So these are really sort of not very consequential compared to the ferns, which is a much larger group. Now, we want to talk about some of the characteristics of them. So let's start with characteristics of a fern. What could people, if they were to look at a fern and know it's a fern, what are some of the basic morphologies? So something that everybody would know of, because, you know, if you walked into a grocery store and you saw a fern, you would see that it has these large fronds or fern-like leaves, we call them. They usually arise in a rolled up manner, and those structures are called fiddleheads. Ferns also have sporangia on their back surfaces on the leaves, and these sporangia often occur in clusters that we call sori. So these are some of the typical features of the ferns per se, but you don't see them in equisetum and silotum. So what is the difference? So let's take silotum. Mm -hmm. How is that different than a fern? Very different. In fact, silotum and equisetum are both different enough because they have highly reduced leaves. And because of that feature, they weren't put together with the ferns because they looked so different. Um, so very reduced leaves, but we believe that these are still megaphils or, you know, large leaves that you would see in the mega megaphilus clades. And they have clusters of sporangia. So aquacetum has basically a cone-like structure with a lot of sporangia in it. And silotum usually has three sporangia at each node. Okay. And how are the, um, the equisetum leaves arranged? Ah, that's very interesting. So the equisetum leaves are arranged in a circle around the stem, multiple leaves that are all arising at the same point in the stem. We call that a world arrangement. And are these plants, are they found in one geographic area, or can they be found in a diverse area and growing in different climates? So, mostly, I mean, there's always exceptions, right? But mostly they're found in moist habitats. There's a reason for that. We've heard of the alternation of generations that you see in all land plants. And so, when these plants have free living gametophytes and they make swimming sperm. So in order to complete their life cycle, they need water for the sperm to swim to the egg. And so because of that, the gametophytes need moist habitats. And that sort of limits these plants to really moist habitats. But also found all over the world. But found all over the world. And I know people buy ferns, grow ferns. Um, but are there any sort of significance to human society besides just growing them as a, a plant? So, you know, I actually had to look this up because I was thinking, what are ferns good for? Ecologically, people think that ferns might be um, able to colonize. So they might be a, a step in the succession stages when the habitat is very moist and then it slowly starts to dry out. Ferns might be part of that succession. They may provide microhabitats for insects and other animals. 
provide shade for shade loving animals and um but you know like economically what what are they doing for us so a few of them are edible the fiddleheads of ferns are edible if people have grown up on the east coast they've probably eaten some of these there's a fern that's actually really quite significant and that's a water fern called azola so azola harbors nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria inside it and it's usually found in rice paddies so in these rice paddies it's a significant source of nitrogen and those people then don't have to fertilize their rice paddies but really not much going on in these groups but it sounds like at least one species or genus does nitrogen fixation which is what well, harbors harbors cyanobacteria that do not yes but you know horticulturally ferns are amazing you know if, if you don't love ferns it's like you're missing out i would love to grow a tree fern in my house in davis but not possible and one last question is there fossil records what's the oldest fossil record so this is very interesting there are actually so i to- told you about the three groups in one of the groups the cylopsids there's no known fossils So we know very little about this group. The Equisetum relatives, we actually know a lot about these because they were a dominant tree form in the Carboniferous and they were part of our coal forests. But even those, if you look at those fossils, you can recognize them because they still have those leaves in a circle around the stem and so their morphology has not changed other than going from trees to becoming very small. I there must be a ton of fern fossils but I can't think of anything very remarkable about them they kind of look like ferns. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um thank you Dr. Sinha for filling us in on the manilla fights. Absolutely.